Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you by Del Monte Foods, the brand preferred by more women than any other line of canned fruits and vegetables in the world. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, The Lady from Istanbul. It was just like any other busy evening in the tambourine. Outside of the tourists, the customers were about the same, too. Including a towering hulk of a dock worker with the incredible name of Abdul Omalia, who was paying for every three and taking the fourth on the house. But it was another customer who held my interest. She was seated at a corner table holding conversation with a tall, pencil-mustached man. She was American and she was lovely, with soft green eyes shadowed by heavy lashes to match her jet black hair. I was trying to decide what she reminded me of. St. Louis, maybe, or New Orleans. A most beautiful creature, eh, Rocky? Huh? Oh, yes, she is, Abdul. But not for you, Effendi, as you can see. Oh, you get me wrong. The girl's upset about something. A little too upset. <laughs> a lover's quarrel. What else? <laughs> Come forget her and join me for a drink. No, not this time, Abdul. Thanks. Have another on the house. Uh, bartender. Yeah? You heard the Mr. Jones on... I was sure there was more than anger in her tense face and eyes. What I saw there was a strange uncertainty and terror. Leave me alone. Get off from there. No, no, my arm, Henri, you're hurting me. It takes pain to teach a lesson such as this. <laughs> All right, that's enough, mister. Break it up. This is no affair of yours. In my cafe it is. Now beat it. So, with you it takes the knife, eh? Who oh, are you? <laughs> now pick up that knife and get out of here. Rest assured, you have not seen the last of me. You will more than regret this. Both of you. All right, folks, settle down. It happens every day. Show's over. Back to your tables. Mr. Jordan. You all right, lady? Yes, but I'm, I'm so dreadfully sorry. Oh, you needn't be. Here, sit down. Mind if I join you? Please do. I'm Marlo Granger. It's a pleasure. I don't recall meeting the guy with the mustache, either. Oh, his name is Paget. Henri Paget. Hmm. Not a very nice playmate. He's only a shipboard acquaintance. We met aboard the Doreen B, coming down from Istanbul. Well, then you're new to Cairo. Our boat docked here just this evening. I'm at Shepherd's now. We were sightseeing and came in here. I didn't know what he was like, Mr. Jordan. Okay, Marlo, let's forget him then, huh? I would like nothing better. Thank you for what you did. Forget it. I don't like to see pretty girls slapped around. Especially Americans. Uh, Americans? St. Louis, my hometown. Yours? Why, my home? Uh, London. Yes, that's it. I'm from London. Aren't you sure? Yes. Yes, of course. London. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Some folks call me Rocky. Rocky, all these people. I, I must go back to my hotel. Would you what mind? What about Paget? Sure he isn't waiting around? I don't know. It, it's possible. Well, supposing I come along, huh? Just in case? Yes, Rocky, please do. I took her to Shepherd's with no more trouble. Before I left her, we found ourselves making a date for tomorrow. I picked her up the next afternoon. We hired a horse-drawn buggy called a Gahari. We're off on a deluxe tour of Cairo. Strange oriental quarters, bustling bazaars, the Nile Drive. The threat of Henri Paget seemed to be forgotten. He wasn't following us, but somebody else was. A blonde, bareheaded man in a white suit. He showed up at the pyramids, the Sphinx, and the museum. 
Then again on a street corner where a native comedian was doing some tricks. I maneuvered her in the crowd, so she was looking at the man in the white suit point blank. Marlo, do you know that man, the one in the white suit? Oh, what'd you say, Rocky? Nothing, skip it. There was no sign of recognition, so I let it pass. As for Marlo, she seemed to have just found life, laughing, full of interest at each new discovery. I don't know, maybe she noticed the same change in me. Well, it went on that way. At three o'clock in the morning, we stood at the top of the fabulous Abdin Palace, viewing ancient and modern Cairo at a glance. But it could have been any place. San Francisco's Telegraph Hill or the Tribune Tower in Chicago. Because all I could see was Marlowe in my arms. Hmm. I never dreamed Cairo was like this, Rocky. Marlowe, that fellow down there with the native fruit. Yes, I've been listening. He's been playing it for years. Ever since I came to Cairo. It used to sound like a clothesline in a high wind. You know how it sounds now? Rocky, please... It's, it's been a wonderful night. Let's not spoil it now. Sounds like all the music that was ever written and ever could be written. In this city, Cairo. I've seen it at night and I've seen it in the daytime. But it never looked like this. Nothing ever looked like this. Rocky, please, I have no right. Nothing was ever like this. Oh, darling. Oh, my darling. Hey, what is this? Is it that bad? Oh. No. No, it isn't that. You had me worried. Come on, lady. We've made a discovery. I know your name, and I want to know more. No, no. How I... you got here and how we met. Rocky, I... I... Marlo, what is wrong? The, the music stopped. Please, take me back to my hotel. Without saying any more, we turned and went down the winding steps of the palace tower to where our Gahari was waiting. And as we rode slowly back across the city... I saw that she was again the tense, bewildered girl of the night before. I tried desperately to get at what happened and why, but it was no good. And we didn't say any more until we reached Shepherd's around four in the morning and stopped at the door to her room. I still didn't have it straight. Well, I guess I figured wrong again. Rocky, I wish you could understand. So do I, Marlo. Goodbye, Rocky. Uh-uh, Marlo. Just good night. <laughs> <laughs> Marlo's eyes darted from his face to mine and back again. And all the terror was there now. Because the man she'd called Emu was big and fat and evil and smiling with a devil's head. A most tender and touching scene. Most tender indeed. Gorgay. Alwa, Sertambe. See that Mr. Jordan does not remember it. I whirled as a huge dumb giant in a robe and fez appeared from behind. In another second, I was locked in his arms like a baby in a cradle. Only this guy wasn't gentle. I tried to make a fight of it, but I couldn't move. He just held on with his huge arm around my neck and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. Till Marlowe's lovely face and the grinning devil's head faded into a haze. And I never knew when the arms gave way and I dropped to the floor. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan, wake up. Come, come, my good man. Open your eyes. All at once, out of the blackness, there was bright light in my eyes. I realized it was from the early morning sun pouring in an open window. A man with too much pomade on his hair was bending over, shaking me. I was on a bed in a small room. But I wasn't waking up fast enough. I say, are you all right now? Uh, you just can't stay here, you know. Oh, I'll make it. Who are you? I'm the room clerk. I was instructed to arouse you. Wait a minute. Isn't this Shepherd's? Oh, dear, no. You're in the Caliph house. Small but in good taste, sir. What am I doing here? A man brought you in during the night for safekeeping, shall we say? He paid the bill, but it's now checking out time. What man? What did he look like? Oh, rather tall with a mustache. Uh, <clears throat> he was sober. His name was Paget? Well, at least you remember that much. Let me get that phone. A moment, my good man. There's a payphone in the lobby. He had it his way, and I called Shepherds for Marlowe Granger. She'd checked out two hours before... Leaving no forwarding address, nothing. What I couldn't figure out was the link between Paguette, Satan, and Gourguet. So I tried a piasta for police headquarters. Sabaya speaking. Uh, Sam, it's Rocky. Do not shout, Jordan. I can't hear you. Listen, I want you to help me locate a girl. Look at... <laughs> Is 
that a function of the police department... Look, Sam, you know I don't call you unless it's important. Continue, please. What is her name? Marlo Granger. Marlo? Indeed, Jordan. What do you know of this girl? Well, she arrived in Cairo two days ago on the Doreen B from Istanbul. Green eyes, black hair. Registered at Shepherd's till this morning. And what is your interest in her, Jordan? Strictly personal, Sam, but you got to find her. She's in trouble. Look, if you ever did anything so for me... So you wish to find this girl? That's right. Well, so do we. We had best discuss this in person. What are you driving at? A man died in a Cairo hospital just an hour ago. His name was Henri Paguette. Paguette? We found him in a room at the Orient Hotel, badly wounded. Just before he died, he told us who shot him. Sam, don't tell me. Yes, Jordan. He was shot by the girl you and I would like to find. Marlo Granger. <laughs> Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Let's drop in on the Robinson family for a little while. It's just about dinner time, and Ed is due back from the golf course any minute. In fact, here he is now. Hi, gorgeous. Well, hi yourself. How was the golf game? Okay, really worked up an appetite. Say, what's on the menu tonight? Smells good. <laughs> We're having pot roast. Mother's special recipe you like so well, remember? Do I? Oh, there's nothing like it. Only just remember the catsup. My favorite kind with the special flavor. Never fear, my love. You mean Del Monte catsup. I always keep a bottle of Del Monte catsup handy. It has such marvelous flavor. Yes, friends, Del Monte catsup has the flavor. Marvelous tomato flavor. Why? Because Del Monte is a special blend of piquant spices, sparkling vinegar, and beautiful big red tomatoes. Tomatoes ripened right in the field and rushed direct to the cannery. None of that rich tomato goodness is lost. It's all right there in Del Monte catsup. Real tomato flavor at its best. Look for Del Monte catsup at your grocer's. You'll be delighted how little it costs. Just try Del Monte catsup. Along with Mrs. Robinson, you'll be saying... Del Monte ketchup has such marvelous flavor. I wouldn't be without it. Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, the lady from Istanbul. I didn't ask Marlo Granger to come into my life, but there she was, and she was everything I'd ever wanted. Getting her out wasn't so easy. Not even now, when I knew from Henri Paguette's deathbed statement that she shot him. I couldn't believe it. The memory of the tenderness Marlo and I had known a few hours before told me it wasn't so. I wanted to find her, and I didn't. I went back to the tambourine, and Sam was there waiting with questions that went on and on. When he was gone, I left the crowded cafe and went up the balcony steps to my quarters over the tambourine. I stood there alone for a long time, looking out the window into the sun-baked street, wondering about Marlowe and thinking how this was always the way it happened to me. The same old bitterness was back with me again, and so was the man in the white suit I saw casually standing on the corner below, watching the tambourine. Well, this was my chance to collar him, only just then a knock came. Rocky. Marlo. Rocky, help me. Marlo, please, what happened? Please, Where have you been? I... You're all I remember, Rocky. They're looking for you, Marlo. Whatever it's about, you've got to tell me. I... Help me. Help me. Before I could stop her, she'd slumped to the floor. I closed the door, got to the window, and pulled down the blinds. As I did, I noticed the man in the white suit was gone. I lifted Marlo then and placed her on a couch. Her purse slid to the floor, and as I picked it up, the heavy contents confirmed my worst fears. Inside, I found an eight-shot Webley Fosbury English automatic, recently fired. I got the gun out of sight, then did what I could for Marlowe. With the help of some cold water and smelling salts, I brought her around, and I had to make her talk to me. I don't know, Rocky. I don't know. You've got to, Marlowe. After the guy you called Emil showed up at Shepherd's, and the big fellow laid me out, what happened? I... I remember only that... But Emil kept speaking to me about Henri Paguette over and over again. Where did you go? The next... The next I remember, I was standing across from Henri in a hotel room. I... I think I heard pistol shots and Henri slumped at my feet. That's all, Rocky. Then why should you blank out? I don't know. 
Oh, there's so much more, Marlowe. Who is Emil? Emil Satan. I saw him first several weeks ago in East Tunbull. What else? How did you meet him? I, I only remember that, that he was talking to me, telling me my name, saying I lived in London. He promised to take me there after this trip to Cairo. You came along to Cairo because he told you to? I had no money, and he said he'd take me home. It, it was kind of him, and I... Rocky, you, you must believe me. I'm trying to, Marlo. I'm trying. Rocky, I don't know who I am or what I've done. I don't know anything except that, that the noise of those shots seemed to bring you back in front of me. I had to see you. I had to see you no matter what. I think I'm glad you came. Wait here. Where are you going? To the police. No. Don't worry. They won't learn you're here. Just stay put. Don't even answer the door. I'll have my bartender keep watch. Rocky. Yes? Why do you do this for me? It might ruin you. You know I've killed a man. I'm not sure you killed a man. But the police are after me. They'll be after you. Why? Why do you do this for me? Marlowe, if all this drives you to me, the least I can do is to find out what made you do it. Rocky, I don't know what's happened. There's so much I don't know. I don't care now. I found you and, and you're my life. Now and forever. <laughs> Jordan, in spite of what we know about this Marlowe Granger, you still wish to find her? More than ever, Sam. At the moment, her whereabouts is not known, at least by the police. Sam, I'm going to ask you a favor. You've got police influence. Be careful that you do not overstep yourself, Jordan. All I'm asking is that you wire London, missing persons. Find out if a girl answering Marlowe's description is a recent amnesia victim. London? Amnesia? It seems that you know much more of the lady than when I talked to you last. How about it, Sam? You can get an answer quicker than I can. Tell me, Jordan... Where are you hiding this girl? Sam, listen to me. I am listening. I've never asked you yet to step out of uniform or do anything because of whatever regard you have for me. It has been truly spoken. Be friends in social life, but as strangers in all else. Okay, then I'm begging you. I'm saying, please, get me an answer from London before you make me turn her in. Very well, Jordan. Thanks. But mark you this, Jordan. You will turn Marlowe Granger over to me when I ask for her. Sure, Sam. It's a promise. My next step to get an answer was the Doreen B, which turned out to be a slow freighter docked at Bulak that carried a few passengers. It was being unloaded. None of the crew was aboard, so I followed one of the loading trucks till it pulled up at a big woolen import warehouse. A visit to the manager's office there gave me a little of what I wanted to know. What's it about, mister? Uh, that stuff from the Doreen B. You mind telling me where it's from? A shipment from the Satan Target firm, London. Why? The uh, Doreen B, their boat? It could be. Why? Well, I'm anxious to see one of them on business. You know where Satan's staying in Cairo? Ah, uh, he didn't say. Hey, you read where some dame plug forget? Yeah, yeah. Uh, will you be seeing Satan again? Unfortunately, he gives me the quivers to look at. He'll be here at six o'clock to pick up his dough. So will I. So that was something. But Marlowe herself was more important. The confusion, the uncertainty, the trying to remember. From there, I paid a visit to Hassan Bey, a Cairo physician who explained about the different kinds of amnesia. And how a mind already sickened might possibly be made to react against its will by powerful suggestion. And with that, I went back to the tambourine. And when I got there, I learned the promise I'd made to Sam was one I couldn't keep. The tambourine was in a turmoil. I ran back and up the balcony steps, scrambled over Chris, who was picking himself up from the landing. The door to my room was smashed open, and I knew before I was inside that Marlowe was gone. I was back to Chris and helping him up fast. Oh, come on. Oh, take it easy, Rocky. Oh, you told me not to let a man in. This wasn't a man. He was ten men all rolled into one. I'm sorry, Rocky. The thought of Marlowe again in the hands of Amos Satan drove me back to that warehouse fast. He had a business date there at six, and I wanted to be waiting when he got there. I made it 15 minutes before the hour. Bad luck, mister. Satan's already here and gone. Gone, but the date was for six. He showed up early. Why? Look, I don't argue with a guy with a puss like that. Anyhow, I told Mr. Satan you were looking for him. You told him? Wasn't that what you wanted? Oh, thanks, pal. (laughs) 
It took only a few minutes more to reach the docks and find out that the Doreen B had lifted anchor a half hour before, headed for the Mediterranean. There wasn't time to argue with Sabaya now. No time for anything but to keep moving. Some fast scowling around took me to my drinking friend, Abdul Omalia, there on the docks with some other workers. Jones and Afendi, what brings you to the banks of the Nile? I need your help, Abdul. I need it bad. Uh, then you have it, Jordan. It is an honor to repay you for a thousand favors. All right, then listen. There's a boat sailing for the Mumadia Canal in Alexandria with a full crew aboard, but it's got to be stopped. Oh, is that all that concerns you? Be sure what you're doing, Abdul. We need plenty of men. I don't promise what happens with the police or anybody. Oh, you hear him, men? Who comes with us? All right, let's go. Ah, we come. The days of piracy are gone, Effendi Jordan. But tonight we live. And not long before dark, Abdul Amalia, his motley crew, and I were on a launch pulling out into the Nile, armed with guns, knives, and gaffing hooks. About an hour and a half after sunset, we picked up the wake of the Doreen B. And in no time at all, we were alongside and piling over the railing onto its deck. It was all over topside that quick. And while our men held the crew, Abdul and I slammed through the upper cabins. No luck there, so we went below. And at the end of a dim passageway, we found the right door. Get off this boat, Jordan, while you can. We're going back to Cairo, Satan. Rocky, Rocky, no. Stay back, Marlo. Gorgay will deal with these foolhardy intruders. At once, Gorgay. You, I kill now. Leave the big one to me, Jordan. At last, I met a worthy adversary. The two came together like two elephants at play. They went down with Abdul slamming the giant's head against the floor. It could last only so long, and my eyes were on Amos Satan. Rocky, he's reaching for his gun. Satan's hand dove into his pocket, and his gun came out, but he was too slow and fumbling. I twisted the gun out of his hand and let him have it across the face. And I wasn't gentle. Enough, Jordan. I am gone with the big one, Jordan. Keep back, Abdul. I'll handle this one. What do I... Jordan, enough, I tell you. It's not enough. What have you done to Marla? What have you done to her? She came of her free will. Free will? <laughs> you knew she was suffering from amnesia when you found her. Where, in Istanbul? It was Istanbul. I don't know how she got there. But you knew of her sickness. You forced her against her will, making her kill for you. And what can you do now? Emil Paget is dead. I'm rid of a wily partner whom I hated. You'd use a beautiful woman for that. Beautiful women were Paget's only in caution. That made it easy. Yeah. You had only to instill hatred for Paget in Marlowe's sickened mind, provide her with a weapon, and suggest murder over and over, till it paid off. And she will pay, oh, Jordan, not I. You're paying, Satan. You're paying for me. Nah. I dropped my gun and I was in with my fist, taking out everything that had piled up inside me these past two days. Nah. I kept pounding him until Abdul nah. finally dragged me off and nah. took Emil Satan away. And Marlo and I were standing there in each other's arms. Oh, Rocky. Tell me everything's over. Tell me. Yes, Angel. Yes. Nothing more is going to happen to you. Darling. Darling. I will be all right. Tell me again. It's all over. Everything's going to be all right. For both of us. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. Say, if you ladies want to add extra flavor to everyday dishes, try cooking with Del Monte tomato sauce. You'll find Del Monte has a rich, spicy flavor that's never been matched. In fact, Del Monte is the original tomato sauce. For a whole generation, women have trusted and preferred it to all other cooking sauces. For instance, Mrs. F.W. Porter of San Francisco, California said... I started using Del Monte tomato sauce when we first came to California about 20 years ago. I'm a graduate of the National School of Domestic Arts and Sciences, and good cooking has always been a hobby with me. And in any dish calling for tomato flavor, I just reach for Del Monte tomato sauce. I know it'll give me just the flavor I want. Thank you, Mrs. Porter. And friends, it's true... Of the millions of women who prefer Del Monte tomato sauce, many have been using it ever since they first learned to cook. Yes, American housewives have bought more cans of Del Monte tomato sauce than any other brand. Remember, for matchless flavor that gives a lift to everyday dishes, buy the original tomato sauce, Del Monte. Back now to Rocky Jordan. It was.
war's all over, almost. When we all got back to Cairo and police headquarters, Abdul Omalia turned out to be a good witness. Marlo was booked on involuntary manslaughter, and then the charge dropped, and she was put in my custody. I made arrangements for her to be taken to the hospital for treatment. Emil Satan was held for first-degree murder. Well, that was the time when I should have held Marlowe in my arms like any movie ending. But instead, that was the time the guy in the white suit walked in. Mr. Jordan? Yeah? My name is John Dawson. Yeah, I've seen you before. Yes, I've been following you and Marlowe for two days now. Mr. Jordan, I get the impression that you're quite fond of her. That's right, so what? If you don't mind, I'd like to tell you a little story. Well? Not so long ago, two people very much in love were touring the continent of Europe. In Marseille, there was an accident. Go on. Shortly afterwards, one of these two people disappeared. The other tried to follow. The trail led from Marseille to Rome, to Athens, to Istanbul, then to Cairo. What are you getting at? The person who left, Mr. Jordan, is the one you know as Marlo Granger. So? What you don't know is that her real name is Marlo Dawson. She's my wife. You... Your wife? We were married in Reading, Pennsylvania in 1943. I have the certificate in my... Oh, no, skip it, skip it. Well, what now? I've just been to the hospital. The doctor said that her loss of memory can be cured by a simple operation. One week's time and she'll forget all that happened since the accident in Marseille. Forget? Yes. Forget all the evil of Emil Satan and the murder of Henri Paget. And me. Yes. Now, what are you talking to me for? Because technically, Marlowe is in your custody. The doctor requires your consent before he can operate. Now, why should I give it? Because you love her, and you know I love her, and because you know the evil has to be wiped away and she has to go back to what she once was. Okay, Dawson, she's yours. Thank you, Jordan. For my life again. <laughs> So she'll forget it all in a week. I wonder if I'll ever forget it. For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written tonight by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman from a story by E. Jack Newman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya. Rocky Jordan is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is A Stranger to the Desert. If it's a gay summer dessert you want, serve Del Monte Fruit Cocktail. Ready diced, ready mixed, a real flavor treat. It's so easy, it's so good, it's so good looking. Ask for Del Monte Fruit Cocktail, the brand that always puts flavor first. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 